Today on the channel, I want to talk to you guys about two things. The first is the new firmware update for the DJI Inspire 2. And yes, you did hear me correctly. There is new firmware for this old bird and there is some new improvements that actually are very, very good. Further to this, I want to talk about local data mode. Now, if you don't know what local data mode is, it allows you to actually cut off all external communication on your device. And DJI have announced that they are going to be bringing it to both the Fly app and the Go 4 app. And we'll talk about that a bit more after. Now, the first thing I want to touch on though is this new firmware for the DJI Inspire 2. It is version 1.02.0500. It was released today and it brings a number of fixes as well as some new support for a larger SSD. Now, just before we go over the release notes, I just want to say I have actually been flying this release for about two, two and a half weeks. I got a chance to have an early play with it before it was actually put out to the public. And I have to say it has made quite the difference to the overall stability of my aircraft. And I'll talk about that as we go through the release notes. Now, the first big change DJI have said is they've added support for a new 960 gig SSD. Now that means there is a new SSD coming, which is going to be compatible with the Inspire 2. If you look at the notes at the bottom, they also mention that it can only be used with the new Cine SSD Reader UG coming soon as well. So not only do we have an SSD, there's a new reader. Interesting is that the new SSD will not work with the existing readers and you will have to get the new SSD and reader but that reader will be compatible with the older SSDs as well. Further to this, they state they have optimized the gimbal to reduce minor roll rotation when the aircraft is flying left or right. Now, I actually had this issue on this aircraft and it was actually doing it. And I have to say, this firmware update for me has completely resolved it. I've had no problems with that since doing the update. Further to this, they state they have optimized gimbal to reduce drift when there is no operation or when the operation is stopped while the aircraft is hovering. Now, this is around the gimbal yawing itself when the aircraft wasn't moving. And what would happen is you'd actually set the aircraft up and the gimbal would yaw. Further to that, I actually had my aircraft yawing by itself as well. And this issue was sometimes a bit difficult to work out. Was it actually the aircraft or the gimbal rotating by itself? But I actually had that issue as well. And that also appears, or both of those issues, both the gimbal yawing and the aircraft yawing by itself appear to be completely gone for me in my tests. Now, DJI don't specifically say about the aircraft yaw, but in my tests of this firmware, it is absolutely solid. When I set it on an object, there is no tiny yaw creep, no tiny rotation. And if you've had this issue, you will know what I mean. Because what you tend to find is you need to put quite a long lens on and you will see the aircraft very slowly begin to creep around. But again, on this latest firmware, no problems for me at all. The next thing they have done is improve the aircraft and battery power system. Now, what DJI have stated is as follows. They have optimized the power management during flight. Flight power is dynamically adjusted according to the battery temperature and remaining battery power. Further to this, what DJI have said is, fixed occasional issue with battery level displayed in the app was higher than the actual battery level, which led to the battery level dropping suddenly. Now, this issue all ties into the same problem that was seen with the TB50s on the M200 series. And whilst DJI had already done the updates on that, they hadn't actually brought that to the Inspire 2. And now they have. The benefit of this, as I understand it, is that now your TB50 on both the Inspire 2 and the M200 series are on the same firmware because before this point there was actually two different firmware levels and if you actually swapped your batteries between the aircraft you would get the firmware inconsistency error. However now this should level up the battery firmware across both of them. Now with this new update there are some warnings that go along with it as well and what they actually state is this firmware update is important it fixes a critical issue with the battery level suddenly drops during flight due to inaccuracy accurate battery calculations. Now, what they have said is this firmware basically causes the aircraft to slow the available power down 
if the battery level changes. Now, I did a lot of flights on this firmware, very, very aggressive ones on the system as well. And at no point was I able to actually get it to do this reduced flight power. It actually is very similar to something they introduced later down the line for the Inspire 1 series when we were also seeing battery issues in low temperatures specifically. And on the Inspire 1, it would actually cause the aircraft just to have much reduced overall power and it was quite easy to trigger on the Inspire 1. However, in my tests on the Inspire 2, I could not get it to do it at all. But it is worth bearing in mind that I've been testing this in summer, warm conditions, and whilst I did really push the packs hard right down to a low level, in winter you could begin to see some slightly different behavior and it is worth taking into account. Now, Overall, that is the main update for this Inspire 2. It is fantastic to finally see some fixes for these gimbal issues, the rotation issue, as I've been having as well. And it's welcome to see that there is a new Cine SSD coming of a larger capacity because people have had trouble getting hold of the 480 gig, I think it is, model in recent times, and it hasn't been available anyway. And that did lead to some talk of whether the Inspire 2 was actually becoming obsolete. But the fact that there's a 960 gig SSD come in means no, there is a future here yet. And again, with DJI bringing this firmware, and it means that the old bird still has some life in here yet. Now, other than that, that's the main overalls of this update. As I said, I've been flying it. I am more than happy with it. I would strongly suggest updating it. What they do say is when you update it, make sure you update with your camera fitted to make sure that it does get this new update for the gimbal as well. If you have more than one camera, you will probably get the inconsistent firmware message when you put the other camera on. And further to that, if you've got more than one set of batteries, make sure that you turn your aircraft on with all of your batteries after performing the update and checking that it gives you that inconsistent firmware message on the home screen and then slide to update and it will make sure all of the modules within the aircraft are on the correct firmware. Now, the next thing I want to mention is around local data mode. Now, today, DJI have put a statement out talking around more data security and how they've had their aircraft and apps and software checked. But the big take from me in this is that they are now going to bring local data mode to both the Fly app and the Go 4 app. Now, Local data mode was introduced about two years ago when there was a lot of noise about data security in DJI back then. They introduced it into the Pilot app for enterprise models and the idea of it is it allows you to tell a device to cut off all communications with the outside world and it will only basically communicate with the aircraft. The downside to this at the time though is it actually turned everything off and it means you couldn't even get maps working. It felt a bit of a half-hearted attempt, if I'm honest. However, now DJI have stated that they are bringing this local data mode to both Go 4 as well as the Fly app and it's going to have two versions. It's going to have a total lockdown local data mode and a local data mode with map services which allows you to actually cut off communications but you will still have access to maps but those maps will be based on map box maps in the US a on US servers and not in China and things like that. Now, it's good to see DJI expand this. It was a bit of a strange one when they did it at the time that they actually only brought it to the enterprise models. And whilst you could use the pilot app on the Inspire 2 and some others, it wouldn't work on all of the aircraft. So the fact that they are bringing it to Go 4 especially is very welcomed. What is unknown though is, is Crystal Sky going to get an update to support this? At this moment in time, they have not said, because remember, if you've seen my other video, the Crystal Sky is running quite an older version of Go 4, version 4. I think it's 1, 4.3.16 checking the release notes 4.3.16 so um but it is running a much older version compared to today's version which is 4.3.36 so it's substantially newer so anyway what isn't known is are we going to get it on crystal sky we'll try and find that information out that is it for this video i would suggest you do update your inspire 2 good update 
hopefully we'll see the new Cine SSD release soon. When there's more information on that, I will let you guys know. Hopefully pricing on that will be a bit better than we've seen on the pricing of Cine SSDs in the past. Considering they are basically an SSD, it would be good to see some more realistic pricing on this kind of hardware than we have. And if there is any further updates on the Crystal Sky, I will let you know. Now, if you'd like to support the channel, there are links to the Inspire 2, the Crystal Sky, in the description of this video. They are affiliate links. So if you would like to support the channel, please do check them out. You can also hit that subscribe button as well if you'd like to support us and don't forget to hit the little bell button too. Further to that, I also do a live stream once a week Sunday night on my second channel, which is Mads Tech Live, and we tend to talk about more drone related subjects, electronics and things like that. If you'd like to join me, please check out the link to that channel in the description of the video. It's Sunday night, 10 p.m. UK time, about 5 p.m. Eastern. And again, we talk about more of this nonsense as well as camera and other drone and tech related stuff as well. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support us, check out our Patreon page as well.